Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 288. Back in the church room bar, but next week probably not. Pro- uh, yeah, next couple of weeks. Next couple of weeks will be virtual. Be but mobile. That's okay. Yes. That's okay. It anyway, is. you said you had some news to start off. I have, uh, I have an apology immediately to Chuggalo mom and Chuggalo sister. Mm-hmm. Um, they were in my part of the world, and I oh, did, yeah. um, I... I'm going to give him a half apology. The reason being, I was like, hey, you're in my part of the world. Would you like some recommendations? The next message, they said yes. And then the message after that was, we just sat at the hotel and ate at mom's diner. And I go, I missed the in-between where they said uh, yes. Missed, oh, it went like see previous posts or whatever. So, that, didn't know so that's my fumble. I apologize. Oh, but uh, Chuggo Mom, big fumble. you owe us a lot of information on the previous ones. Like uh, <laughs> uh, John's um, freebie. Um, that's the one I want you to chime it's in not, on. Yeah, no. Um, I need you to chime in on that uh, down below. Thanks. There are no freebies. Uh, the rest of the stuff is just going to be stats, with the exception of Chuggalo Dave. Chuggalo Dave, once again, we have given you beer, and you still haven't – no feedback on what you think of the beer. Um, no so, so you're on Where's the list. feedback? Um, another thing on feedback, I've adjusted the volumes because I've noticed the volume levels retarding on the YouTube. Mm. Um, other people have commented on it, so I – Futzed with it quite a bit today, so hopefully that works. Mm-hmm. Bad news, JT. <laughs> Booze is down. Booze is down. Booze is down. Are you ready for some stats? Yeah. Wine is at a 27-year low. In in the United States. In the world. In the world. For consumption. For consumption. Okay. Correct. And the production levels are the worst in six decades. Oh, well, that is not good. And the, t- the tough thing is wine isn't like seltzers or beer in mm-hmm. the fact that they can't pivot. Mm. Like, it takes years to make oh, your yeah, product. Oh, yeah, you can't pivot. Uh, but you can hold it. You, you can. Much you, longer well, than beer. Yeah, you can hold it. And, and most you can hold it better than uh, Imperial Doppelbox, mm-hmm. probably. <laughs> yeah, most likely. And there's been a uh, shake, shake up at the top, JT. Oh, okay. Shake up at the top. Who's been shaking up? Uh, the three beers, the most popular beers by consumption, by purchase, by whatever measurement mm-hmm. in the United States. Can you name them in order? In the United States? In the United States. Exclusively, this is United States podcast. Mm, in order. Beers in order. Beers in order. From number one to number three. I'm going to say... Um, I purposely didn't Miller write it down Light. in case he looked over here. No, Miller Lite's number one. Coors Light? No. Is Bud Light still up there? Uh, it's it's up there. It's not number two, though. Oh, okay. So it's three. It's number three. Number two, Michelob? Michelob Ultra is Ultra. now number two. It wow. just uh, took over Bud Light. So it's been Miller Light and Bud Light. It's been yeah, like Bud Ford, Light. Ford yeah. Chevy for the longest time. Uh, Miller mm-hmm. uh, Mick Ultra is up there. Not Mick Golden Light. God, God help us if that was actually available. Mm-hmm. Um, Mick Ultra. So the market share, market share. This is percentage of the market share. Just beer sales. Miller Lite's nine point seven percent. Mick Ultra is seven point three percent, and they've come into a couple of. They're now the official beer of the Olympics. Michelob Ultra. So, so yeah, they're gonna wow. chime in to. And I, they've sold this this idea that they're like the health beer, uh, or the CrossFit beer. Yep, yeah, they're. But the, it's like one calorie less than. Miller Lite. Correct. Uh, yeah, and, that's what's funny. But in Good absence, marketing, though. Absence that's of that's taste. what you want when you pay a marketing firm. That's what you want. And Bud Light. Want that. I'm, I'm glad that you said that, that they're the beer of CrossFitters. That's an excellent, excellent segue mm-hmm. for this last stat. stat 6.5% for Bud Light market share. Yeah. Um, they're not the beer of CrossFitters. They've taken a huge hit. The beer of CrossFitters, athletic brewing company mm. doubled their valuation in the last year their market cap now is 800 million in the really? last nine months it's doubled it was 400 million now it's eight uh, 800 they're doing million. mostly mostly non-alcoholic beers they're they're exclusively exclusively i didn't know exclusively non-alcoholic okay. beers. well that seems that's like a the lot beer of the cross buyers uh why though um because i know the alcohol has a factor but the calories God, and the you, carbs. you're just teeing me up and yeah we i even, you up. i just want to guess more than anything 30 percent of gen z doesn't drink and has Damn. no interest in drinking ever period dot we'll see about that consumption is consumption is going down and the the wild card out there especially and i can relate to this being from wisconsin um the biggest non you know health conscious reason marijuana is yeah, becoming I, more and more illegal that. And that's why 
you've heard it here first, you've heard it multiple times, Wisconsin will be the last state in the union to ever legalize marijuana. Mm. Because the Tavern League is so incredibly powerful and it's just the la- largest and most effective lobbying group in the state of Wisconsin. All right. Um, I wonder if the federal government will legalize it before Wisconsin and then they'll have no choice. Which, which will be interesting because uh, role reversal 20 years ago, uh, Wisconsin mm-hmm. was the last state to give up 0.1 for the um, uh, blood alcohol oh, content. Yeah. Um, and then they were the uh, second to last state to retard their um, age from 18 to 21. Mm. I think Iowa was the last one. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. But that was like six months apart. You're losing a, a huge market, you know? Uh, oh, well. And, they, That's it, such a and life. without smoking and, you know, bars and public places like that, you can't, you can't overlap them. Mm-hmm. Because there is a, in my opinion... Uh, there is a natural overlap to those things, but you can't do them in public spa- split spaces together. True. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I would. That's an it's an interesting point you bring up. Gen lot, Z's lots not of drinking. Lots of bombs there. Gen Z's not drinking. Sources all I over feel the like place they will. Well. I feel like they will eventually. I don't know. I have. I never really liked. Um, weed the weed feeling. So I, I don't think I would be in that camp. But I also, you know, I don't know. Drinking's fun. It's social. Weed's less so social. Maybe they're not being social. Maybe there's correlation here where we're not looking. You know, they're they're on their phones more. They're at home playing video games more. Uh, they're, they're probably less social, I would say. Gen Z is probably less social. And that's probably one of the results of it. Weed is a good reason that they would give. But they also wouldn't admit to being less social, I don't think. Alcohol is a very social thing. I think people are looking more at the health aspects of it. And I think finances come into it a little bit. Finances do. Health is true. Less people are going out. More people are living at home with their parents. Um, They don't have the expendable income Mm -hmm. that uh, we did at that time or the generation before us did at that time. They will. what What are their expectations? You know, this this goes along with like thirty percent uh, is a significant number. That's a though. huge, huge number. Yeah, like what are their expectations for what they're drinking though? Like, there's they still have cheap beer. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, the I don't know if the expectations that the finances would be it would have been more affordable. I don't know that I don't know what's changed. I I will say this from a, a social committee aspect is more and more people within my company are looking for there's after work opportunities or during work opportunities to go and be social mm-hmm. and to build mm-hmm. camaraderie and spree the core and all of those buzzwords. More and more people, if it's hooked up or jointly hosted at a facility or whatever that has alcohol offerings, won't come and will cite that as a reason. Mm-hmm. So they want alternative events that don't incorporate that. Even though they're not partaking, mm-hmm. they don't even want to be around. They don't want to be around. Oh, okay, fair enough. And this, and, this is, and this has been cited a couple of times yeah, um, okay. for like events that we've Things set Things are up. changing. It's probably best not to drink at a work function. It used to be the opposite. It was like everyone's drinking. Yeah, that's that's how you just networked and um, things got done. Yeah, right. Business deals got hashed like out. Men, you know? They all got yeah. hammered on a Friday afternoon, took the train home, you're good. Now, no, not so much. And... Mad Men is also the reason why, probably. You know, is that is, harassment. is that a concerning thing? Like everyone is like, I would like to go ahead, you know, and I I'll even give tip my hand a little bit. I like the aspect of I'd like to go have a beer with that guy, or I'd like to go have a beer mm. with that gal. You could still you could go to lunch. You could have a a pop. Yeah. I don't know. I would like to go have a beer. What would I do? Uh, but hmm. does that increase your not how much you like somebody or whatever like that, but does that does that offer any sort of like bal- rebalancing the scales? If you're like, I'd like to go have a beer with that individual. Yeah. Even even it doesn't have to be the workplace, but like, it, what's it the just, Gen Z version of that? Like, we could still say that, and yeah. the people we I know. Ca- I want to go catch Pokemon. Is your yeah? Gen Z I don't version. know how the Gen Z people are connecting with people they're you know not strangers, but yeah, you know people they're not friends with yet. I don't know. It's a good question. They're, they're Gen ice, Z, how are you doing it? They're icebreakers. What's your icebreaker? What do you go when you when we want to go have a beer with somebody? What's your alternative? Yeah. Go play video games together. Go eat. 
And then that, that negates the health thing. It, Steph's pretty close to Gen Z. Steph's I know close. He, I'm not sure which Gen he's in. I know on the newest MasterChef, I forget the I forget the age cutoff, but it's a battle of the generations. Oh. Boomers, Xers, Millennials, oh, boomers. and Gen Z. Can't stand them. Comfort cooking. <laughs> I crave it. Um, yeah, I've been I've been like binge watching uh, two things, mostly uh, Kill Tony, but also watching, not binge watching, but uh, watching a lot of it and um, Hot Ones. Finally, getting to the Hot Ones craze that everyone seems to have. You watched Conan yet? Not be out. Yeah, it's, Conan's what got me back. Got me back it's on. The, it. It's the best one, and it's Head and Shoulders. How he does it and just no sell. He no sells it. He he did you, a great job. As you're a wrestling fan. So I went back and watched the Gordon Ramsay one from about four years ago, and I'm wondering if Conan, Conan watched any of the old ones because when you watch, there's two real famous ones, um, the Paul Rudd one and the Jennifer, um, what's her name, Jennifer uh, Love Hewitt. No, the Hunger Games. Jennifer Lawrence. You know she really loses loses it for a while. She cries pretty pretty hard. Uh, but Gordon Ramsay's is is like the precursor to the Conan O'Brien one. He yeah. goes absolutely insane. Like he's just doing things that are out of the ordinary. <laughs> and um, I'd say it was probably did you wait almost to par with Conan O'Brien? Did you Conan watch O'Brien DJ Khaled? Khaled. I have seen. What I a saw worthless. The highlight, what pilots. a worthless. Another what one. Where he quit too or something. Get out of here. You think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a. What a fraud. But no, I haven't rewatched that one yet. Watch. Good. Good guy. UA putting the date on the bottom. Yeah. Good guy. Two twenty nine twenty four. Mm-hmm. Crave that. And the time. All right, this is uh, Urban Artifact, Wrangle. Have you had Wrangle yet? I haven't had Wrangle. Because I didn't check. Because I saw it and grabbed it. Because I said, this, Cause you'd have these to open, flavors are amazing. You'd have to open the program I that, often won't, do. that won't be named. I often do. That won't be named. When I'm buying beer, it, I, that won't be locally named. when I'm buying beer, I often open the app and scan the beer to see if you've had it. Because it would make for less good podcasting. Less good. Less good. Which would, is the name I, of a, a I would go newscaster delete, in Dayton. I, I less would, good. I would. I, <laughs> Dayton News with less good. <laughs> uh, I would go delete it. Oh, that's your beer? Oh, here. Just don't look. All right. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. This is a cherry vanilla Midwest tart. Midwest fruit tart. I'm, I'm going to tell because I'm thirsty. We didn't pregame. We didn't pregame. We didn't have a pre-beer. I'm going to kill this beer in about three and a half minutes. Oh, hell yeah. Urban Artifact knows how to do sours. Um... And when they say tart, crushable, they sours, mean it. Too. Yeah. Urban Artifact, I've, um, as we've mentioned before, out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Out of a church basement in Cincinnati, Ohio, yep. and the church is still functioning. Great neighborhood. I don't know if he still if he still listens. Most likely not. But Chuggalo Alex, remember Doctor Alex? He, I lo- love Doctor. He uh, he li- used to live in that neighborhood, but I believe now that he's married, and I think they have a kid on the way or has been born. Uh, they do not live in that neighborhood. I would like to go get breakfast again from that place because that staff oh, yeah. was awesome. That was awesome. You I can would drink at any time of day. And you can drink anytime. And they just laughed at us. They thought, not like... That place oh was called God. what? Like eggs or something? Fireside? Oh, Fireside? That's what it was called? I don't know. We got to find it though. Oh, yeah. Reach back out to it. I will reach It's back on the out. west side of 75. Is that the one north south? It's on the west side of 75. Uh, yeah, that Urban Artifact, great, great neighborhood, great facility um we've talked about it extensively i don't know that we need to go too into detail but um i wouldn't mind what if you want to what's your favorite we'll just we'll just hit the highlight of it what's your favorite urban artifact memory stat anything like that because uh, i've got one. the memory that i have that i have the most i don't know if it's my favorite my least favorite or just a memory that i think about a lot is uh i found it um I found no challenge in liking or at least consuming the pickle beer, but while we were there, with with you, you and I, and the, the bobo, um, then I had the spicy pickle beer and I couldn't do it. I, I just found I that, that spicy pickle beer to be disgusting, couldn't get it down, and I gave it to you. I think 
I give it to somebody. I've been drinking because we save our pickle juice. We conserve it, and uh, my daughters love. So like, I'll pull out some pickle juice and I'll drink it, and my daughters just love it. Yeah, pickle juice is awesome. That was one of those old wives' tales. I remember when we were kids. If you drink too much pickle juice, it will kill you. Mm, I didn't I, know I that. remember. Oh yeah, that was it. Ran ran deep in my friends. Uh, <sighs> sorry, Stacy. Um, off the top rope, my favorite Bobo story, or urban you, artifact. Or, or, urban artifact. That Stegosaurus beer, we yeah. bought one beer. It was a three seven five, um, uh, so just over a pot, you know fourteen ounces or whatever they call it, and it was twenty three dollars. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're spending oh, twenty three dollars on a beer. Yeah, it was like half the budget. <laughs> and yeah, it was like half of the remaining budget after like the hotel room and everything was paid for. Did we pay for the scooters from the? I don't think we paid. I think that was app based. It was app based, yeah. But definitely the hotel room. I still had those apps, geez, for years, and I never used them again. I wish I had, because that was so much fun. Um, I still, every time I go down to Dayton, if there's one right in front of uh, Barrel House, I'll just tool around for a little bit. Yeah, Dayton, the Dayton ones are good, but that's a different app, I think. Yep, that, so that's uh, Ride. That's had, Ride, yeah, we, we had, had Lime and Bird. Bird, yep, those were the two. And then my new scooter wheels are coming in the mail, so I'm excited to put those new on. New scooter wheels. Yeah, now, like, my son has an electric scooter, so... My youngest one, so he doesn't need that shit. He, they were really excited about it when I first told them about it, but I, then they were just like, this I, is old news. I fucking love scooters. I will, scooters anytime cool. I'm in, in Dayton, I'm uh, riding a fucking scooter. Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, Do you want to do the can art? Yeah, we could do can okay. art. UA, Under Armour. Yeah, that, that, that's the other thing. When we say UA, I, my mind never goes to Under Armour. No, it goes. It to always Under goes Armour. to Urban Artifact. And in, in craft beer groups like Craft Beer Geeks on the Facebooks, uh, where you where Tom can be your friend, uh, UA is becoming very very popular um, as they either increase distribution or mm. beer traders are out there. It's a very really? sought after beer. Oh, all right, good for them. The other the other beer that. Sh- Coming to Dayton for the first time, or it has been the last week, is Trillium. So if you oh, ever okay. see that out in the wild, um, it's out of Massachusetts. I've seen it. Um, predominantly white cans. Pick that up because they don't they don't do a bad. It's Trillium. Like, it's it's like toppling Goliath in that they don't have a bad beer. Oh okay. And they specialize in um, hoppier beers, so pale ales, IPAs, etc. Well, this can art is like a lot of uh, Urban Artifact can art. It, it is um, a drawing on like a um, sort of like a two-tone background. It's a woman and she is like a falcon trainer. Uh, Falconer. Falconer. And that's really it. She's wearing um, kind of a, I don't know what type of, I don't know, garb that is that would be maybe Asian or like Middle Eastern kind All right. of uh, uh, wear, maybe Eastern European. I'm not sure. Who would wear that outfit? Central Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Central Asia. Yeah. Which would make sense with the falconer too. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's basically it. She's holding a cup w- with a string attached to it. I wonder if that might be the Falcon's, like, you know, food or something. But maybe it's an Urban Artifact beer. Who knows? It says cherry, cherry, cherry on it. That's the Can Out Boner segment. Wrangle. It's uh, it's a horn meant for the blood of her fallen foes. Ah, uh, it's a horn? Yeah. I didn't know that. Is that true? Or you just meant that? No, I just made it up. That's pretty good. Uh, 8%. <laughs> I don't know if I'm using that. Sorry, Stacey. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the Can Art segment. Not not a lot to report, but you can tell an Urban Artifact beer when you see one because it's got really that kind of background here and different d- different colors. Uh, so that's it. You want to hit the review or you want me to go? Nope, I got this. Uh, I was just putting it in nice. my scores because I'm terrible at that during the podcast because I get so enveloped in the riveting conversation. Yeah. Off the top rope, this beer is near perfect. As I get to the bottom of the beer, because I have one drink left and I want to savor it, it starts getting chunky, so I should have mm. either rolled it or rotated yeah, it, as we learned on there. Uh, last week. And that is super satisfying. Cherry vanilla, for me, is a miss as a flavor overall. I oh. either want cherry or I want vanilla. I don't like the combination of it. Mm. Um, I think the vanilla 
is desirable by itself and I think Cherry is by itself. I just think they're strange bedfellows and I appreciate that I'm going to be in the absolute minority in that opinion yeah, and totally. I am and I'm fine with that and I'm comfortable with it. That is just a small hindrance to this beer. This beer is fantastic. I appreciate how thick and viscous it is on the palate. Uh, everything is very subtle. Um, the cherry could always be ramped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Four, seven, five. Ooh, good score. Uh, I would have to agree with most of that, except cherry vanilla is awesome. Uh, I do crave it. I like it. I like the combination of the two things. I think it's smart. The, uh, the one thing about this beer that it, it almost tricks the mind because we've had so many smoothie sours yep. that I, th I actually, my brain's like telling me that this should be thicker, um, but it's not. Like more, maybe more pulp or, you know, sediment or whatever. When you do get some of that at the bottom, the flavors should be amped up, both of them, vanilla and the cherry. That's, the, that's my only thing here. Like it's there, but the main component of this beer is like cold tartness and that's good they, they do tart well but uh needs more cherry more vanilla and this beer would be a five for sure i bought this beer because it was cherry vanilla and i like those flavors together but i give it a four two five just because i think that the flavors highlighted on the can need to be amped up now i am interested in the midwest part of this maybe I don't know what that. What I don't. That I don't. Do th I don't. Anything. I don't think it's like West Coast. Eat. I just think it's something that they can just put on it. Because mm -hmm. I agree. Again, there's no cherries grown. Oh, sorry. There are cherries grown in the middle. It's more never of mind. a. Never mind. That was dumb. A, I think it's more of a recipe thing than an ingredient thing. Like what? Like, or they're just making it up. Maybe they're just like this is the way a Midwest fruit tart should be. I don't know. Or maybe there is a Midwest fruit tart. What do you think about that? There could be a Midwest fruit tart. Um, while I get this next beer, did you know that Ohio is sixth in the nation for gambling? Uh, money spent on gambling? Now, I don't know about well, that money. That, that, I don't that know about on, money won in gambling. That's, that, that falls in line with population. Oh, okay. They're, oh, we're sixth. Ohio is. Well, well that's it, interesting. I did not even look and think about that. California. New York, Florida, Texas, Illinois. Well, maybe. What, what am I? What am I? Let me see at? what the other ones are. Maybe they're in that order. Yeah. Th so it would have to be normalized. Uh, maybe this. Maybe I'm missing something here, but I'm gonna look because that's interesting that you said that. Damn right, it's interesting. Nevada, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Michigan, Ohio. So not in the order. No. Nope. Okay. So the, oh that okay. So those are. Nevada, New Jersey. So we're Nevada obviously is like three times as much as the next person down. Then New Jersey because Pennsylvania. Uh, people just go, people just go over the border. The border of what? To New Jersey for Atlantic City. You gotta think where the meccas are. Well, it's Nevada, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Yeah, because it's close. Everything's condensed there. Well, I mean, there's a lot of racinos and stuff around here. You gotta think of like your proximity to. Gambling. I think this is probably heavily. Towards the sports gambling apps. Except Nevada. Maybe New Jersey. Just given this, the ones they have on here. Yeah, I guess you could see some of what you're saying. But what I'd like to see is returns. What states? Oh, what the, is the, the rank of the, the states the, with the best returns? The best gambling. Yeah. Um, so this next beer is Sonder. Another Ohio beer. Cincinnati, I believe. Uh, Mason. So yeah, Cincinnati area. But betwixt us in Cincinnati. Yes. Um, Wisconsin this is guys. Called Divot. Lemonade and iced tea ale. So that's not an Arnold Palmer. That's a. It is an Arnold Palmer. But it's a beer. I thought that was lemonade and. Is it iced tea? Yeah. So it's an Arnold Palmer. Okay. It's an Arnold Palmer. And that's what the golf. That's what they're indicating with the golf. Although this, this golf uh, logo is kind of um, like the Masters logo. Uh, in just I guess just color iconography some other stuff yeah iconography yeah that that other one it's crushable like I feel like this is gonna be at eight percent too that's probably one of the yeah most that's a bad eight percent yeah that's true that's that should have been taken into account I might might if I thought twice about 
that hidden eight percent, I might even have gone to a four or five. But I didn't, and I can't change it. Them's the rules. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. I appreciate both cans. Uh, yep. Sonder. I I'm excited for this one. So um Caterade has been getting into like less intrusive beers. And part of that is the Rheingeist Tea series and even non beers like Twisted Tea. Uh, so this might fall in line with that. Did you drink your uh, peach tea Berliner Weiss that Steph gave us? I probably did. I might still sitting in my fridge. After he told us that, after he gave us that and told us where it was. Uh, I went and bought another four pack. So I know I have some in the fridge that I never never drank because I hoard them. It's a bad idea. Shouldn't hoard them. Just drink them. But I probably drank the one he gave, and I have the ones that I bought because they were there, right on the shelf at Shell. Where where do you fall? So you 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 said where Caterade fell, like you know the alternate like Twisted Tea, mm -hmm. Brisk, whatever. Aren't Arizona iced tea is a big thing. That was your inflation fighter because they fought tooth and nail to not sell those Arizona for oh, more yeah. than 99 cents. Where are you on the Arnold Palmer? Like, Well, I love Arnold Palmer's. You I actually um, had a bunch of the Arnold Palmer water enhancers back when those were still popular. Um, I stopped using water, water enhancer like Mio and stuff because I'm at home. I'm not at, in the office anymore and I don't need something to cheer me up from being depressed all day so uh i love arnold palmer's i think that's a great the problem with lemonade and iced tea is that to get good ones they need to be full of sugar now chick-fil-a has a decent diet lemonade yeah uh but you know unsweet tea and sweet tea are like two totally different drinks they're not they shouldn't even be considered the same i don't know anything i those teas i can do blah drain pours Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet tea. In or the sun south. tea or if you yeah. now, now I'm not talking like brisk, that shit ain't sweet tea. Yep. Like if you're in Virginia or South and you get some sweet tea, it's good. It's like it's like next level good. But it's so full of sugar. It's just so much sugar. Sweet tea is the bomb. <laughs> I love sweet tea. I uh, can't really drink it that much anymore. But yeah, Arnold Palmer's are Why great. can't you drink it that much anymore? It's just too much sugar. I just, you know, metabolism's not good. I can drink it. It's not like I get sicker or something. My wife thinks that I've killed my metabolism by only, like, not eating for, like, the it's first possible. 12 hours I'm awake every day. Oh, the, oh, that, no, I don't think you've killed it. I, I don't know. I did do. I think age kills it. Yeah. Age kills it. So um, you're probably doing the right thing. What, uh. You're just doing that, uh, what do they call that? Fasting? Uh, yeah. OMAD, intermittent fasting. I don't know. Um. I did this weekend, though, speaking of one meal, I did do the uh, cheesesteak challenge. Mm. Um, I got called out by a buddy. So we went there, took the kids. Uh, how Have you ever seen the sandwich? Mm -mm. So it's a 16-inch sub that they yeah. cut. So it's two. Uh, it's triple meat, triple cheese, triple okay. triple all the fixings. Triple everything. I uh, You have to eat it within 16 minutes to succeed okay. to get your meal for free. Uh, and you get a t-shirt. Mm. Um, how long did it take me to finish said sandwich? I could do pictures, but pictures... I'm going to say it took you 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Bless your heart. 7 uh, minutes, 6 seconds. 7 minutes. I thought last week you said that you didn't care about the time. I don't want to pay for this. I don't oh, want to pay, pay for the sandwich. Oh, yeah. okay. I still ha I'm still competitive. I still All have right. to beat... So Seven minutes is really good. For I, I could have went sandwich. faster. So the store champion right now mm -hmm. is at three minutes and seven That's seconds. That's too fast. I wouldn't have been able to do that. That's disgusting. The tenth place person was at five fifty seven. I could have. I could have got. I. You could have got tenth place. But they watch you there, and I was like, just let me know. I, I finished the first half of it in under two minutes. Okay. And I go, just let me know. Like I want to kind of enjoy this a mm -hmm. little bit because mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a submarine house is a pretty good sandwich. Uh. I was like, I just, I don't want to qualify. I'm not coming back. I'm not doing the championship mm -hmm, or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I love their t-shirts. They were out of them, obviously, when they were there, so they're going to mail it to us. Ah. Um, but I have multiple other iterations of the previous year's shirt. And then I have to be the first at the table. So the other individual I was with was at 9.59. Mm. But I had a, I, I had a full 22-ounce 
pour of a bush light before, and I finished a bush light during the sandwich wow. eating. That's impressive. Yeah, it just... You must have been full. Uh, no, I went back to the table, and my five-year-old didn't eat all of her pizza, so I was eating her pizza oh, and, good. and the onion rings. Dang, so that doesn't sound that challenging. But that was, the last, that was the last thing I ate till Sunday afternoon. Oh, okay. So 24 hours I went. I, yeah. I had a beer when I got home. Okay. That's uh, that's quite a feat. Seven minutes. I wonder if I could do it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Probably not. I'm gonna say no. I couldn't do it. You don't think so? To save yourself thirty dollars, maybe hours? like ten years ago. Because there was a lady, or there was an individual that came in, and she goes, "Make sure you don't lose. We already had a loser today. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, it's a thirty dollars sandwich." Yeah. It doesn't taste. Oh, fifteen like it. minutes. Sure, maybe I could do it in fifteen. Yeah, six, seven? sixteen. No, I don't think so. It's just too fast. So the last time that I did it with Crago, you know Crago. Yeah. Crago almost died. So Crago did food challenges his entire life. They would come up with, you know, doing shift work and everything. They wouldn't let him do it? Who can eat? No, he, uh, uh, his acid reflux or whatever, his started acting up. Wow. So he's like, I'm done with challenges. Damn. I mean, he's a, in his mid-60s now. Yeah, so yeah. This Smart. Was... Be done with it. But yeah, so that that's uh, a lot of fun. Adam Richmond had a lot of health problems. The guy who did Man vs. Food? Yeah, I think he had GERD. GERD, probably. Gastrointestinal reflux disease. Yeah, he had a bunch of stuff and he stopped. But he's back now. He, I think he's got a YouTube channel. He does another show. The, then they gave Man vs. Food to some ginger, angry, ginger-looking dude. Yeah. Because I love that show. That um, I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, especially from a couple of people, Charlie Aaron, other people that listen. I enjoy Triple D. That's how I would mm-hmm. always spend my Friday nights. Sit down, being like, I would really enjoy that food. Um, but not, not as much anymore. But um, it was there for a couple of years. Okay. All right. Well, you want to go? Or can art? All right, we'll do can art. There it is. This, this, this was JT's by language when it was the can He's like, oh, we'll do can art. Yeah, basically. Oh, I thought you were going to do it. Uh, you know what? I, I'll i I'll tell you what. Not to spoil it, I don't really give two shits about this beer, so I didn't really want to do a can art. Okay. But I did it already. It's got Sonder, the... Sonder, uh, we love you. This is uh, probably going to be like a Sonder, but, thing of... Especially because uh, they're from Wisconsin. You know, they've got that like Master's Esque logo, and they got this thing here. That's the can. A tradition... Oh, can I say it? Don't memorize have... this can. He Forget might... you saw it. He might have it... Um... Trademarked. Uh, Tony Romo's the the voice of CBS Sports. Oh yeah. Uh, um, a uh, tradition like unlike unlike any other. Oh, is that trademarked? The, the Masters. The Masters. He, it might be. Well, it might be like. It, don't worry. It, it, might, it might be like when Michael Buffer goes. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. That's dumb. He still gets paid fifty fifty to a hundred thousand every time he says it. That's stupid. Nitro. Let's during just say something heyday, else. Let's just say, alleged, like, let's get ready to brumble. Allegedly, during the Nitro days, he was getting a million dollars a pop on Monday nights. Jeez. Whew. What a stupid thing. Uh, you know, I don't... Of course I'd want that money. But here's the thing. What, when, you, when you're at the end of your life and you think about the things you've achieved, there are zero achievements that you've actually been able to account for. Because your life is revolves around saying let's get ready to rumble over and over again and yeah that life's sweet as fuck man you go around to different boxing matches and different cool events and you got money in the bank yeah i'm sure he's not thinking about achievements he's just like i'm rich and i've done it uh, he probably says he pulled himself up by the bootstraps. He probably makes a bunch of shit up about himself. Because his, bro- his brother has a Guess who gets catchphrase. two flying fucks about that guy? Him and he his, has done nothing for this world. Him and his brother are both catchphrase guys. Uh, Bruce, yeah, catchphrase guys Bruce, can go Bruce basically Buffer. just, you know, walk off a cliff and no one would miss him. That's, that's the part I'm talking about. Is that, okay, maybe you don't need to achieve something in your life. But, like, the contribution to the world is just so insignificant. No offense, Bruce Buffer. Wow. That's Mike, uh, Michael Buffer for the one. Michael that, Buffer, whatever. The, the See, exactly. I don't give two about. shits. Uh, I, just, I, just don't, I just don't feel like, yeah, okay, you're rich. It's, what's the difference between that and being like, uh, you know, a trust fund maybe? Nothing. There's just, there's just nothing, nothing there. I don't know. It's my opinion. But 
I wouldn't turn that money down. You come I'd here say, for hot takes I'd and cold beer. You know, I'd say welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast for $100,000 uh, a pop. Hot, hot That'd hot be great. takes and cold beer. Anyway, that's the counterpart of segment. Um, this beer... Off the top, this beer doesn't do much for me. Mm-hmm. I kind of tip my hand. I'm not an Arnie Palmer. I like lemonade. I just don't like tea. I appreciate that people do. There's people close to me in lo- my life that absolutely love the combination or love tea or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, different strokes, different folks. This is technically classified as a golden ale too. So it's not like a fruit sour or mm-hmm. anything like that. It doesn't. It's not amped up. It's what you would expect uh, from a, uh, Arnie Palmer in a beer form. So it's going to have, it has to somehow navigate the, the, the beer, typical beer tropes and not go to like a seltzer or whatever, where it's much more that sweet sugary aspect that most people drink at Arnie Palmer's are after. <coughs> Sorry, Stacy off the top rope. I'm going to give this a three, two, five. <laughs> oh, that's so way too high of a score for this beer. Uh, this beer is likely using the wrong tea. I think that's part of the reason. It has the earthiness of gin. I like what you did there. Divot, tea. Ooh, I like tea? that. Yeah, there's a Was lot. that a purpose? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Come on. Divot and tea. Yep. You, divot. you inadvertently. I think that's the first time I've even said the name Divot. You inadvertently make the best puns. That's awesome. Uh, but it is a, a lemonade and iced tea beer. So it's not like it was um, a reach. Yeah. It's it's right there for the take for the, the for the picking right. Yeah. Uh, it's just not good. I think they are using the wrong tea. Do you think this again. beer is worth the drive? No, this beer is a one point two five. It's a drain pour. I don't like it. I think that it has it ha- it reminds me of gin in the way that it tastes like earth, and it is unappealing. I don't know why people like gin. I'll never understand it. I'm to gin what you are to tea. Uh, it fucking sucks. This beer sucks. Would uh, if we were going in on a six pack, would you pitch in for this? Um, well, just because I'm a nice guy, yeah, I, d- I would, but I wouldn't drink any of it. I'd rather drink nothing than have this beer. I'd rather just be social, sober, or maybe this. like, or if you gave me this and I didn't know, would, would you have? And I take a sip and I'd be like, this sucks, and then I would just carry it around. Would you have as it warms up in my hand all night? Would you have a slice instead of this one? A slice of what? No, like a like an orange like a slice. slice. Yeah, a slice, and I'd probably yeah. slice a golf ball. You know, dog leg. If you if you can I'm do it on a dog leg, then you're good. I'm trying to do. Other, I'm great on dog puns. legs. I was trying to incorporate putt. I can't get putt. Honestly. You can't get putt. I got um, drive. I got pitch. I got slice. Yeah, this beer is not no hole in one. That's for sure. Um. Yeah, drive. You got them all. You got a lot of them. I did. A lot of golf terms. Um, I was, uh, before the pod, we were talking about gambling and stuff like that. I, I won some money on the British Open, so mm. I picked the correct winner. But I will say, I do like Sonder. So I get, I am, I, I can't, they can't claim that I didn't give this beer a rating in a fair way. They've already got your money. Cheers. Boom, fair way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even hear it. You you went way too. You didn't let it simmer. No, it can't simmer. You gotta know it right away. Yeah, this beer sucks. I don't like it. I'm it's not about. I'm not even gonna drink it. Yep. This beer is a double bogey. Well done. Triple bogey, probably. This beer is a seven. This beer does not have the this stroke. This beer, yeah. You basically, uh, I don't know. Get your caddy to drink it. <laughs> this one, this blame this one on the caddy. This beer is uh, why you have a caddy. Yep. Don't just you know, blame this one on the caddy. It's There's a six pack. Right? Sometimes you need a mulligan, and so, this in this case you need one. So so you have four others of these beers. There's four more. Four more beers. Sounds like a good opportunity or a good regift to uh, spill. Sounds like I'm gonna put them in a four pack. Uh, you know, click top thing and pretend like i bought it that way but get like a four no 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 get one like uh a 451 that's got the price point on it oh yeah yeah, yeah. like this really like sucks. So someone will drink, drink it and be like wow this is so good but make sure like they see it like you, i think you know what i think if you're a gin drinker i think you'll like this beer I might, that much i think i might have one for you have what uh so you're king on the botanical oh the so, four you want the four yeah, yeah. The, the click top yeah Oh, no, I don't care. I, I have a bunch of fours. They just don't have the prices on them. That's what I'm saying. I do. So I'm going to make this happen right now because mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna dance. I don't know why I keep going to this beer. I like because you like the botanicals. I don't I don't like this beer. It's bad. Um Yeah, it's it's um gosh, it's just not good. I don't know Here what you got a whole Look at that. Twenty three ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine, thirty ninety nine. We'll take that one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take that one. Boom. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, this beer is bad. Um, I'm I'm disappointed because I was gonna you know it's low low alcohol. It should be an easy drinker. It should be an easy summer beer. I'll say this about Sonder. they're hit and miss. They they've, they've they are hit and miss. That's they've, true. They've, Sometimes they hit hard. They've had some um, swings and misses. Yeah, swings and misses. Sometimes they hit a hole in one. Sometimes they double bogey. Sometimes you know they hit off the women's tee and and wind up hitting it into the drink. You know. Shit happens. Fucking love it. <laughs> I just love all the uh, Shit sh- shenanigans. Um, are you a golf cart guy? Or are you a, a always a, guy? always a golf cart guy? Because I'm a scoo- golf carts are fucking awesome. I, I'm a scooter guy. Yeah. Um, I would. This is where I'm jealous of Doctor Um because I wish I lived somewhere that was more golf cart friendly. Yeah. Because like you guys, we have a lot of friends that live in the local. The unfortunate thing for us is our. F- friends live across north fairfield mm. that's kind of yeah you can't do that yeah. like i can take a scooter no one's gonna put like a golf cart yeah, yeah there's a lot of like golf cart friendly neighborhoods uh we're not yeah we're not in one of them you're not in one of them no that's all right yeah dr om is there there are golf carts in my neighborhood because there's a family there's a family three different families they're related yeah on the same I, street i think if you're gonna be in like a group of people like that like you got to be ready for it yeah. Because once it gets going, like it picks up steam, and you can't be the one that holds everyone back. You got to buy in just as much as there. And like like Dr. Um, he's like, you know, pacing with everyone else on like buying the golf cart, getting all the accessories, doing all the cool shit that those neighbors do with each other. Um, I feel like I'd be like, okay, guys, like I just paid all this money for travel ball. Let's slow down for a second. You know, there's seasons for our spending. Stacy has vetoed a backyard bar, so mm-hmm. like uh, a doctor um, like a shack bar, or whatever you mm-hmm. want to call it. She's mm-hmm. like, at, never in a million years. And I go, what? Yeah, not in a million years. Not in a million years. I think you should do it. I mm, listen. There, there are a lot of things. There's, uh, th- there's, there's the priority list of have your is, own place. Yeah, there's a priority list because we'd still need to like have we need to have two sheds in because one to hold the mowers and stuff. Well, yeah, you keep the shed you have. And expand. You get a new shed. Yeah, it just would obfuscate the. They I, sell I want like that now. I there's companies that sell um, sheds for hanging out in. Yeah, now. they're I, not for sheds. I'm such a fan and want one, but. Or you get a carriage house. Um. Yes, that would be a dream. That would be awesome. There, You'd probably do the, so much better than me. There's a house. Uh, uh, no, because I need to redo this one. You but, can focus on it. Um, there's a house in the neighborhood that has a, um, a uh, in-law suite above the mm-hmm. gra- garage. That that's yeah, the so perfect. That's basically place. what yeah, we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just and it's like close. It's just oh, r- right nice. here. Yeah. We we did look at it, but that was before our means. Could before your means. But could have cut. Could have accommodated it. Mm. Well, now I turned that way. Sorry, the the sound vacillates. I know good. I'm so close to just buying a board and putting us on headsets. I'm so very close. Headsets like Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. I I'll get some arms. We can get some mics. Do it. Well, yeah, just but like a headset instead. Oh yeah, yeah. instead of the. That, the only problem is like drinking, but that's fine. Oh sure. Yeah. I've I've I've. Dave would not like slamming the can into the microphone. I I would. Uh, well, it doesn't pick up like when I'm on my headset. Otherwise, mm. but. Yeah, we should do that next next uh, couple of weeks. I'll be on the road. It'll be it'll be different. It'll, we'll 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 work out times and shit like that. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll do a good job at that. We'll do yeah. We'll do a good job. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. I don't have uh, any other topics to discuss. No, super. Just been doing baseball. But baseball's over now, right? Baseball's over. It's so much more free time. Yeah. Right? For like the next four or five weeks, we're just going to have like nothing to do. I wish. My daughter just started cheer, and Ooh, that's cheer. every night of the week. Boy, I don't like cheer. But your daughter's cool, so I, I'll support it. I, I I hope she likes it. It's it's all about, at this age, as you've told me, it's finding what they do like. Oh, yeah. You got, yeah. Try, try everything, try and then figure out what they like, and, and then go full steam ahead. Try lemonade iced tea beer. Try lemonade iced tea beer. Just try a different one. Yep. 
Or if you like gin, try this one. Because uh, I don't like gin and I don't like this beer. So they seem to match. They're one for one so far. You've aligned your buds. Mm-hmm. Aligned my buds. A couple birdies in a row. Yep, little birdies. Just right on par. Mm-hmm, right on par. That's right. Uh, mm, I don't know. That's it. The pin. Remove the pin on this episode. We just hit hole 18. Time to go to the 19th. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, time to go to the clubhouse. That's it. That's episode 288. Time to go to the clubhouse. That was the best. Oh, that. Thanks. Re- redo the episode. Redo that. Time to go to the clubhouse. Welcome back to the Brooker Podcast. 288. Thanks. Bye.